yeah, this is a little bit of everybody in here. And the stuff out here, you said was oh, was uh, were her some of her bottles? Yes, these are her perfume bottles. And is that dresser hers as well? No. Okay. It's just a antique piece that I picked up. Now this piece, oh, it's so heavy. Let's see if I can get this out. Wow. Now this was. It's a headdress for sure. It's the headdress that went with the Catherine gown from Catherine Resgrave. And can, this is, oh, this is so heavy. Can I do something real quick? Yeah. For the fan that's going to get these sunglasses, just so you kind of feel like you were here. If you ever watched that movie, your sunglasses will have been on Mae West's head. <laughs> Thank you for letting me do that. Sure. <laughs> Now, how did you get that? Did she keep that, or was that something that you had to track down? Um, this is something that she had. Because I've always wondered that. I always wondered if um, if it was something that, you know, like you told me, she you try and keep it all together because she kept it together. Yes. And there's a respect to that, and that's one of those things. I didn't know if maybe she knew that she would want her stuff all kept together, and so she, having the power that she did, she would request her gowns and things like that to keep, or... That was one of those... You know, in the 30s, um, when I was going through the stuff that was offered to me, there were several pieces that were studio pieces that she kept. It's like from Every Day's a Holiday, the Mademoiselle Fifi headdress, yeah. the heart-shaped one, she, she had that. That's so nice. I have that now. Really? Yeah. And then um, I have all her... Well, not all of them, but I have most of her... Uh, nightclub gowns and headdresses from Vegas and that and I have almost all of her Diamond Lil pieces See, That's and that Diamond Lil. I mean, that's really kind of That's at least from everything I've read. That's kind of where she just decided this is what I'm gonna be This is how I'm gonna present myself from that. That was how she branded herself was from that character So yeah, it's that's almost all having that stuff would be like Having Charlie Chaplin's, you know, the the well, tramp the outfit. Tramp, yeah. I mean, it's yeah. the same thing. It's like the defining moment in their their yes. career. Yeah, especially Diamond Lil. It's all Victorian style, you know, with the picture hats and the parasols. Yeah, I mean that. I have the whole complete outfits, which is you know unique that they were all together. Yeah, I mean, I I love that. I love that you kept all that together. And that's the lovely Mae West right there. Did she ever wear wigs? Did she ever dye her hair? I mean, uh, did, she did wear wigs. Did she? Yeah. 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 Even if was she, she a natural did, blonde? She was a dark blonde, but they lightened it. Okay. Because I'm saying almost everything I found, it seemed like she was always blonde. Yeah. And uh, she would add curls, little hair pieces here and there to enhance, you know. Some of the wigs that I have are Max Factor wigs um, from the 30s. And she, a lot of people may not know this, but she's the person who discovered Cary Grant. Yes. Do you want to tell him that story? Well, supposedly, the, the way history has it. Yeah, well, you and I talked about this before, because I actually brought a book that one of Cary Grant's girlfriends had written, and she was actually a, a reporter and everything back in the 70s. And she gave her opinion on, or she would tell what his opinions were on various things, and a lot of them just seemed really off the wall. And you had told me, you're like, yeah, he was kind of sometimes known for exaggerating a little bit. Yeah. Um, and, but I read, you know, he would say, well, she didn't discover me. I was never, uh, I was never an extra or anything. But everybody believes one story. And you yeah. know that story. Well, the story is because this is what she was told at Paramount. When she saw, you know, she looked out the window and saw him walking down. And he said, well, who's that? And he said... Well, it's Cary Grant, and that's what she was told. He was an ex they used him in extras and yeah. a few uh, tests, screen tests. And she said, well, if he can talk, I'll take him. And she said, what part? And she said, well, the lead, of course. But, you know, if he hadn't done those two movies, he would never have been the star he was. Absolutely. Or it would have taken him longer to be discovered. Absolutely. And he, get, he was, a, I think he was a, uh, wasn't he like a trapeze? performer or something he was in the circus before he was an actor oh, see, I don't know. yeah he that that's what i had heard anyway or i think i read in that book that he he got his start kind of in the uh the circus in london oh. doing stuff like that 
Same. I could be wrong though, I, but I'm I'm pretty sure that's what I read. Yeah. Wow. What is your favorite memory of of May? Was there an event or like a birthday or anything that she just su surprised you, or just anything that will always stand out as just kind of a hallmark of her personality, or was it just everything? Well, it's everything because you know I. I'd sit there and read, you know, sometimes at the beach house, we'd sit there while he was, Paul was preparing dinner, and I'd sit there and read fan mail to her, or, you know, we'd discuss things, and I'd going, I'd read a fan letter and said, I'd give anything to have a second with you, and I'm thinking, oh my God, and here I am spending every day. Yeah. And it's like, it was, I was so honored. Yeah, I know, I mean, I know privilege. exactly what you mean. Yeah. I know exactly what you mean. Yeah. And, you know... There was just different things. It was she was always nice to me, especially on my birthday. You know, she'd take me to dinner, and it was. Okay, did special. she get you gifts or anything? To... Yeah, well, you should give me a check. <laughs> really? Cash works. <laughs> that that is always the greatest gift. But that's I was wondering if like you, you know you guys would be out shopping or something. She go, you know what? You look good in that. I'm gonna buy you that. No, because we never really went shopping. <laughs> you know what? That's that's true. I think I saw somewhere where they said her idea of shopping was. Going out after the stores were closed. Yes, and window shopping. Yeah, and like have a limo drive beside her, and if anybody was walking past, she'd hop in the limo. And Well, what we used to do is go to like Beverly Hills. We'd have dinner, and it'd be in the evening. And because she liked to get out and walk. Yeah. So we would get out and we'd walk and look in the windows and things. And if she saw something she liked, she usually would call the store or send me to. Uh, you know, pick it up. Did would she walk in her neighborhood? Would she ever knowing no. that people knew she lived there? No. No. Mm -mm. How big was her place? It was two bedroom, two bath. Okay. But it's small. It's not huge. Really? Yeah. Because I mean, you have so much of her furniture here that you've been able to show me that I'm like, uh, yeah. granted, I know you said some was from the beach house, but uh -huh. um, some of the pictures you've shown were inside of there, and you, I mean, it's amazing how much stuff that yeah has been preserved from well, there. She had. Um, the walls were paint, painted like a half white with a little yellow tinge, so it made the room look bigger. Ah, okay. I would have expected like pink walls or something like yeah, that. Yeah, no, she was very into neutral. And then, of course, the furniture was white and gold, and the tables, uh, she had gold mirrors on the tables. Really? Which is very unusual. Did she really, um, did she have mirrors above her bed? Yes. She did. She did. That's so funny. Yeah. Because that's, that's one of those things that I like to see how I'm doing. Yeah. And I have one of the canopies from there, too. Do you really? Yeah. Oh, you, time, the, you, you showed me the, um, you had the, the, bed the dust ruffle from the circular bed, the famous. Yeah, from the beach house. Yeah. yeah. One thing, one time I was in the bedroom with her and, and, uh, we were, I was looking at the mirror and I thought, I said, wow. And she said, well, lay on the bed, dude. And so... I laid on the bed, and it's like, you could lay, you know, the mirror only went out so far. Yeah. But when you're laying in bed, you could see yeah, all, yeah. The, all the way to the, the foot of the bed. Yeah. And I'm going, this is incredible. That is. <laughs> yeah, I just said, yes. And that was there since, you know, 1934. Yeah. She had that installed. Wow, wow that or because I think I told you. One of the stories Shelley told me was when she was dating Errol Flynn, Errol Flynn had the same thing. He had yeah. white satin sheets yeah. and, um, or well, white silk satin sheets, and then she said above his bed was a, a mirror. So I didn't know. Maybe that was a thing that was starting back then. I mean, you don't even see people really do that uh, now. She probably invented that. <laughs> I bet she did. I think she did, yeah. What, was her, what do you think was her favorite moment in her career? And why did she just, why did she stop working? Did she not want to transition into a different type of role or would she just wanted to do other things with her life did well when she quit movies uh that's when she decided to go back to the theater and she said she loved the immediate response from right from the audience um even though she loved her film career um she just said her heart was in the theater but she never really stopped. I mean, she did. She was doing theater until early 1960s. Okay. And did she in New York or out here as well, or? She kind of traveled with it. Okay, because I know. Um, I, I've told you that the the comedy store used to be Ciro's, and they have yes. cardboard cutouts, and they have a pink pink couch that um, that I was told and that they were told was once Mae West's. Or, 
you know, I, I, maybe I could actually see the story actually being, it was in something that she sat in that was at Ciro's in a, you know, in a dressing room or something, or who, know, who she, knows. She played Ciro. Right, and they have a cardboard cut out of her with the Ciro's logo and stuff like that, and that's, I was wondering if, I know. I asked him about it and he didn't respond. He responded to everything but that. Actually, um, this trophy is from that Ciro's. The muscle men um, had this trophy made and presented to her. And I have pictures of them presenting it to her backstage at Shiro's. Oh, wow. Now look at the dust. Yeah. <laughs> that's the original dust from 19... That, that's how we'll tell... Yeah, that's how I'll sell that. And then the, we, you showed me... Um, one of these was like her perfume bottle from the book. Or, or from your oh, picture in yes. the book. This one. This one and then there's a fan ma uh, movie magazine where this was sitting on one of the tables, too. And you said that she only liked one fragrance, or she only wore one fragrance. In the later years, she wore Joy, which is... I had never heard of it. Is, is it still around? Yes. It is? Yes. It's the costliest perfume in the world. Oh, okay. Well, that explains it. <laughs> and that's your business, right? Yes. You're, you, I mean, you've been involved in just about every cologne perfume manufacturing... Oh, yeah, the, for years. Yeah, so it's, it's so neat that you... It's kind of transitioned your, everything that you were around May and everything that was involved. It's still a part of your life. Oh, yeah. I mean, she taught me the best fabrics to buy, um, the best fragrances. She she, was she an life. avid reader? Or how did she no, learn no, she about did. this kind of stuff? She read a lot. Because uh, one of the things you told me was you said she knew everything she was doing. She Everything was calculated. She knew oh, yeah. exactly what she was doing at all times. And that's, oh, yeah. that's an educated person. And that's why I was curious as to if she was a heavy reader or how she got her information. And you know, the funny thing is a lot of her movies, well, actually, she would take a part of her life story and put in it. Really? For instance, like, Belle the 90s, she gets, you know, out in the carriage for a ride, and she gets held up. Yeah. And jewelry robbed. That happened in front of the Ravens. Really? Well, I was going to say that happens in My Little Chickadee, too. Yeah. The Masked Man. Yeah, so... Uh, really? Did, how did she get... Did she... Was she not drive, having a driver at that time? Well, the driver or? was in the car, and she was in the car, and as, as she was getting in the cars when they held her up, oh. and they, I think she had like $3,000 cash. They took that and all her jewelry. And so they, they finally caught the person. And then there was another, th another threat that... Um, Somebody sent her a, a letter saying, demanding money, and if they didn't get a certain amount of money, this is 1935, I think, they were going to throw acid in her face. Oh, wow, and that actually had been done before. There's a documentary about uh, the guy who did that yeah. for Crazy Love. And it happened that uh, they finally found the person, and it was uh, one of the workers at the Par Paramount Commissary. Why? Is there any explanation? What they did is they set up a time to meet, you know, for the drop. Or yeah, whatever, yeah, and and they had a detective guy dress up like her. <laughs> so you'll see wow. publicity photos of the two of them together. That's and crazy! Like, I've never heard that. Like, okay, you're like an ugly Mae West. Okay. <laughs> Did you happen to get any of her um, jewelry? Oh yeah, I have tons of it. Do you really? I know you told me most of it was was costume stuff, but do you yeah. have anything that's accessible that you wouldn't? I don't have any of the, the real stuff. But I oh no, 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 I, I no, yeah. <laughs> do you still find yourself uh, watching Maze movies and things like that, no, or have you just always. seen them all so much you do? Oh, oh yeah, especially every. Because I can imagine. I mean, for me, sometimes seeing like a place in the sun, seeing Shelley, it, it kind of. It just brings a tear to my eye, and sometimes it's a little hard to watch. Mm -hmm. She wouldn't even watch some of that stuff. She would watch movies. Most of her movies she died in, so she would watch the movie till she knew the death was coming up, and she'd go, shut it off. I know what happens. I don't want to see the rest of it. Yeah. Oh, wow. And where did she... Was this something she'd wear out, or was this in a movie? Or This was... Um, I think she wore this in Sextet. Which was the last movie. Yeah. With Alice Cooper. Yes. And this is an old piece from the 30s. Oh, it's beautiful. 
I can see her wearing that. Yeah. And I have all, I think there's another box here somewhere. And if, yeah, if you don't want to get anything else out, don't worry. I mean, I just, I love showing, I think people will be stupefied by what, everything that you have. Brooches. This is an old necklace from the 30s. This actually was broken. Well, not broken, but some of the links were missing and I had to redo it. Oh, put, wow. it, put it back together. But sometimes she would do that. You know, she would take pieces of jewelry and take it apart and then plaster it on a headpiece or oh, uh, pin it. Creating her own stuff. Yeah, yeah. It was very unique. Did she ever travel? The only time she traveled was when she did Diamond Lil and went to London. Because I, that's, I was, was just awesome. curious, somebody who is so known for their fashion and stuff, I, you'd usually think that they were making trips back and forth to London or Paris, buying gowns and buying things, but... Well, you know, the, the funny thing is she, she got invited to the White House for dinner. Which president? With, uh, Jimmy Carter. Really? And... I like, said, towards I, the end of her life, yeah, then. and I said, are you going? She said, she said that's a long way to drive for a free dinner. Because <laughs> she did not like flying. Did she have a political affiliation? No, not really. No? She never really voiced her opinion politically-wise. She said, there's two things when you're in the business. You don't talk about religion, and you don't talk about politics. It's funny, that's what my grandpa has always been, that's been his motto to me. And that necklace right there is the one that Tim was able to show us inside the costume box. Well, there's a photo of May. And take a look at those shoes. Because those shoes are those shoes right there. And you just showed me, where was it? Her name is written in there somewhere. Oh yeah, right there. Unbelievable. And what was that from? Was this a, from a movie? Night After Night, 1932. Okay. Her first movie. I'll be watching that later. Yes, we'll see that. And you were nice enough to give me a collection of May's movies. Thank you very much. You're welcome. All right, Lionhearts. If any of you would like to buy Tim's books, Right here, these are two of the three books that Tim has, and um, he's working on some new ones. And what he does is he he focuses and he finds the pictures of May with these items, and then he shows the items that he owns, various various gowns, bottles of di different things. And if you'd like to buy one, that's his name. Find him on Facebook. These are you're not gonna find anything else quite like this when it comes to Mae West because this is somebody who's taken pride in basically restoring her memory as much as you can and we all got to support people like that guys so if you're interested in buying one of Tim's books find Tim on Facebook and he can give you the details on how to do that and now that Tim do you want to explain to people what that is this is the Scaparelli designed Mae West costumes for Every Day's a Holiday, 1937. And she wouldn't come to Hollywood and Miss West wouldn't go to Paris. So they sent the dress form over to uh, Scaparelli to design the clothes. And when she first opened the uh, dress form, she was shocked. She said, nobody can have a figure like this. So she took the dress form and made the perfume bottle for her fragrance called Shocking. Here, Tim was able to show me two of May's gowns from different movies that she's done. And he also supplied me with a few pictures of her wearing those gowns so that you guys can see how lovely she fit into those. And like we told you in the video, she would actually put her thumb on her hip and they would sew her into the gown. So there you have it. 
two of Mae West gowns right there owned by Tim Malakowski. Well, good evening, Lionhearts. I truly hope you guys enjoyed that as much as I did. Um, that's kind of the treasure trove that you always hope for if you're a fan of old movies. And I was just extremely fortunate enough that he invited me out to show me all of the things that he has and let me in to see it all. And to be perfectly honest with you, every time I'd stop the camera, he would remember something else awesome that he owned and would go get it and show it to me. And it got to a point where I was like, I almost need to do a second vlog just on May West with him because after we finished and I put the camera away and everything, then he goes, oh, hold on, I got a box I want to show you. And he goes in the closet, he grabs this box and it has May's name on it and he opens it up and he says, well, this is basically like my treasured items. And inside were her uh, like binoculars or uh, monocles for going to the opera or going somewhere where you're seated. Um, there were napkins that she had kissed and put her lip prints on and she had signed for him. Um, he had two different locks of her hair from different times. Um, like they were like tied in a bow and they were like different colors to show like how one era in her life it was one color and one it was a little darker. Um, he had uh, a religious piece that they had taped in her hand after she, after she had a stroke and she was in the hospital. They uh, taped it in, it was like a prayer, and um, he has that. He has just pretty much everything. Um, he just knew that they were going to probably throw things away, or people would just get it that didn't appreciate it. So I was really fortunate that he let me in to see all that stuff, and um, he's really going to try and help me get some other um, projects that I was had wanted to do. I can ask connections for those, and he's going to help us make, make that happen. So... You got an extra special gift today. Not only was it a two-part vlog, I know some people love those and some people don't, but this was like the unofficial May West Museum. And uh, you didn't have to see me the whole episode, which probably was good for you guys. And somebody's gonna get free sunglasses. So, this is what I want you to do. If you want these sunglasses, if you're a May West fan, you would like to have these, or you're just a fan of mine, you'd like to have them, Here's what I want you to do. At some point in this video, in this two-part video, we mentioned what May's favorite perfume was. It was one word. Put that in the comments below. On, what's today? Today is the 5th of January. So let's say on the 10th of January's vlog, I'm gonna announce the winner. So go ahead in the comment section below, put the name of her favorite perfume, and not the perfume that she, she started herself, but the one that she liked and that she wore exclusively. Write that down in the comments below and I'll pick somebody and you'll get the sunglasses. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Good night, guys. I love you all and uh, do something great tomorrow for yourself. By the way, one of the things that Tim has in his collection is Johnny Weissmuller's Tarzan 1932 loincloth. And uh, he's like, do you want to try it on. I was like, yeah, I, I do. So I actually got to try it on. I did a picture of it. And then after I get done doing um, the training with Dave, I'm going to go back, take an after picture in it. And I'll probably post that and show you guys. And uh, it was just kind of cool to get to wear something like that. You know, like that was such a one of a kind thing. And actually, I don't know if I ever told you guys this. Shelly had told me that Johnny Weissmiller was kind of the reason that she wanted to become an actress because when she was uh, living in Brooklyn as a little girl, she went to the public pool and Johnny Weissmiller was there doing some sort of event and he picked her up and held her and everything and taught her how to swim. And so she always had a soft spot in her heart for Johnny Weissmiller. So to see that was really cool for me. So have a good night, guys. From Hollywood, California, Days with Jordan the Lion, signing off.